today I just want to do a, a very brief teaching on some particular verses that that make many saints feel uncomfortable when really they shouldn't you know quite the contrary they should feel comfortable and and, and be secure and rest in Christ for these verses these verses also you know the ones who are, who are comfortable with these verses I want to bring them discomfort because I really do believe and the scripture's clear you know if, if you do the correct hermeneutics that <laughs> these scriptures are screaming out at, at, at so-called Christians who who desire that, that everyone should should bear much fruit and you know that these these fruit inspectors you know you know the, the type I'm on about the Lordship Salvationists and the and the Romans and the Charismaniacs and the, you know Pentecostals those I want those to feel uncomfortable <clears throat> but I want the true brethren you know that the ones that are still human you know the ones that are still wretched and the ones that 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 cling only a Christ and not self because that you know it's quite apparent to them that, that, that Christ is the only way and that salvation is wrought only by faith and and no good work whatsoever is is necessary but anyway without further ado the verses are in Matthew chapter 7 and verses and we ought to know this 21 to 23 right and it says not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now for Many young Christians and, and you know those who are just coming to the faith, you know these these can be fearful verses if you don't have the correct context, and if you're in a church that you know is almost Wesleyan, you know work salvationist sort of church, you know they 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 will bring these verses to you, and and they will bring dread upon you. But don't be fearful; these verses are actually again completely contrary to what many churches teach now, i just want to break down you know each verse individually but before i do that you know it's helpful to know that that those verses there is a context to those verses and to find that you have to go to to verse 15 and then down to where 21 22 and 23 are you know i'll quickly read that now because that does help and context is is vital you know in such subjects so Matthew 7 this is verse 15 beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inly they are ravening wolves you shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them so the context there straight away is of false prophets you know the, these are people that that in those days would, would claim the name of Christ but actually don't know Christ they will proclaim a false Christ they will proclaim all sorts of manner of false prophecy which we see everywhere at the moment. So that is the actual context. And oftentimes, you know, Lordship Salvationists especially, you know, that they would say, well, you can't really be saved because you're not bearing fruit. And they think the fruit that you're supposed to bear is good works and good deeds and, you know, trying to be sinlessly perfect and, you know, looking smart and making sure you pay the mint a tithe and going to church and going to every single meeting, you know, and, and obviously, you know, laid, you know 20 ton of platitudes you know upon the, the elders or the pastors but that's not true the fruit here the good fruit is believing on Christ as we're going to find out the bad fruit is to believe on a false Christ or to believe on a, another entirely different deity whatsoever and to proclaim false prophecy that is the actual context of it but anyway let's break down each verse again starting from 21 it says not everyone that saith unto me 
Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Now, again, Lordship, Salvationists, Romans, Pentecostals and Charismaniacs would say that the will of the Father is that you do good works, that you do penance, that you know, if you're a Charismaniac, you have to speak in tongues and roll about and bark. If you're a Pentecostal, you've got to have the second, third, fourth and fifth and sixth blessing, which is obviously, you know, <laughs> manifest in, in, in gibberish tongues. And the Romans would obviously, they, they would, you know, say, well, flagellate yourself, you know, vexate your own spirit, you know, and, and go to Calcutta and feed the poor. But that's absolute, to be honest, tosh. You know, the will of the Father is expressly explained and clearly explained within the Word of God itself. You know, and if you'd like to go, if you've got a Bible with you, that'd be good. But if not, I shall read it anyway. But in, in John chapter 6, all right, and verse 40, all right, this actually tells you what the actual will of the Father is. Okay, so it's not flagellation. It's not being penitent it's not speaking in tongues it's not rolling around and barking and stuff it is quite simply as i'm going to read and it says and this is the will of him that sent me so christ is talking about the one that sent him, which is his father all right that everyone that seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and i will raise him up the last day now how simple is that talk about the simplicity that is in christ jesus the actual express will of the Father is to simply believe on Christ. It's not to vexate, it's not to speak in tongues, it's not to do penance, it's not to repent or, or clean your life out or get baptised and pay them into tithe. The actual will of the Father is to believe on Christ. That's amazing and that is, you know, that is something that can really set, you know, people free if, if they've come under false teaching and, and, and they're self-condemning all the time. And that's beautiful. Love that, love that verse. And then we'll go on to verse 22 in, in, in Matthew chapter 7. It says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Alright? So they're saying that, you know, and that their mindset would be, you know, oh, we kind of deserve to go to heaven because we've, we've prophesied in your name, we've We've cast out demons. We've got our own deliverance ministry. And it says, and we've done wonderful works. You know, we've fed the poor. We've done this payment of tithe. You know, gave platitudes to the pastors and elders. We've done so many good things. So many good things. All right. That's what they, you know, believe is, is the will of the Father. And then Jesus in, you know, verse 23. And then when I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, a lot of people would say, well, he's saying go away from me because people are sinful and, and they're working iniquity. No, all our works, all the things we, we do in our life unto God are filthy rags. That's iniquity. That's sin. That's rubbish. That's junk. That's garbage. So these, these people failed to, to believe on this Christ, to do the very will of the Father. You know, they claimed the name of Christ. They were doing works, miracles, casting out demons. But they didn't actually believe on Christ, which was the will of the Father. So he says, depart from me. And also note, he says, you know, I never knew you. So it wasn't a case of, I used to know you, but you were so sinful, I just have to, you know, forget about you. So I never knew you. No, he never actually knew. They failed to do the only requirement, you know, that, that is written in Scripture and that, that, that God himself, you know, desires is to believe on Christ. They failed to do that. And that's, you know, that's a scary place. And unfortunately, you know, and I don't like to say this, you know, this is where you see most of religianity, you know, most of so-called Christendom. They come into the, 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 these types of workers of iniquity, thinking by doing good works, they're going to get in God's books and get to heaven. That ain't going to work. The only way you're going to get to heaven is to believe on Christ. That's as simple as that. So that, that is the, the, the very will of God. But it also tells you that in John's Gospel, in chapter 6, you know, the work of God. You know, these, these were people asking Christ the question. Starting from verse 28, it says, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? So they had the same mindset. You know, they, they, they assumed that they had to 
work their way into God's good books. And I was asking, and they pluralise works, because they, you know, assume there ain't just one work. There's got to be lots of works. You know, we've got to pay the temple tax. We've got to stop sin. We've got to keep all 613 commandments. This was what was probably going through their mind. And Jesus straight away says, "All right." Jesus answered and said, to them, "This is the work singular of God that you believe on Him whom you have sent." Simple again. So the very will of God and the very work of God itself are just to believe on Christ. So I hope that you know the, these <laughs> what Christ has said and the scriptures are resounding clearly in your mind, and that, that if, if you're a, a human being like me, and and you were often, you know you can rest in the fact that if if you trust Christ alone, that you can't trust yourself to to make it to heaven, that then just take comfort from this, that that Christ has done it all for you. If you've believed on Christ and you believe that He is all sufficient for you, and that is Him alone who's going to take you to heaven, that then be at comfort. But if you're out there and, and you're, you're a part of religionity and you think by doing good and think by speaking in tongues and by casting out devils having your own deliverance ministry and, and really trying to work your way to heaven now you need to be really really uncomfortable at the moment you need to actually call out to the real Christ and you need to realise that, that, that all your righteousness are as filthy rags All right, and that, that is as simple as that I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible for you but I do pray that you know you feel uncomfortable at the moment. Your Lordship, Salvationists, Romans, Pentecostals, and Charismatics. All right. Not because I, 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 I don't like you, but it's because I love you and I want to see you actually come to the real Christ and put your all your trust and faith in Him alone. Because the word even says, you know, without faith it's impossible to please God. It's impossible, and this faith has to be in Christ. All right, and, that, and that's as simple as that. And to, you know, if you're listening to this today and, you, and you're unsaved, and you know this is going above your head, just just simply believe on Christ. Jesus Himself says, "Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life." That's as simple as it gets. Believing on Christ, the real Christ, the one who died for your sins according to the Scriptures, was buried and rose victorious in resurrection power the third day. You believe on that Christ. You don't have to have all the facts, but that is enough to get you going. Believe on this Christ today, and you will live forever. All right, and you will pass from death unto life. So I pray this, you know, this very short message, very short teaching, you know, is a comfort to some, a discomfort to others, and that you know it may help someone to to, to come to Christ and be eternally saved and secure. So I shall leave you in peace with that. God bless. <laughs>